And we're at Twickenham for the fourth quarterfinal. It's Australia, a two-time World Cup winner against Scotland, whose best effort was a semi-final back in 1991 against England at Murrayfield. And the winner to meet Argentina here in the second semi-final next Sunday, Australia aiming for a Southern Hemisphere clean sweep. So this is as close as a rugby player gets to lift off at Cape Canaveral. The Australians seeking a triple crown after wins over England and Wales. But as mentioned, the Scots have won two of the last three, a, a famous victory in horrible conditions at Newcastle back in 2012. But before those two Scottish wins, Australia had won 16 straight and a margin of 10 points or more. Scotland hosted the first ever international, beating England at Rayburn Place in Edinburgh in 1871. Their opponents here, Australia, made their international debut at the beginning of the 20th century. Splendid scene now as we stand by for the national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthems of Australia and first Scotland supported by Voices of Morley College London. The Princess Royal has been patron of Scottish Rugby Union for nearly 30 years. Players now on the Scottish side are shedding their tracksuits and this superb stadium surface as we look at the Australian team one last time. Kirtley Beale number 15 at the bottom coming in to fill the very big shoes of Israel Folau and also Rob Simmons coming back into the second row. And the Scottish team, well they're thrilled to have Johnny Gray back in the second row with Ross Ford in the front row and those two um, train for most of the week so there hasn't been too much disruption and if you look at the the bench there for Australia number 23 Craig Cooper gets his second opportunity in the tournament 
Dean Munn and Sean McMahon started last week and also a lot of experience and pace with Lamont. His 100th cap last week. Final moments. This means so much for the Scottish team. They carry the pride of the Northern Hemisphere, the last Northern Hemisphere team standing. We're just about set to go, but Australia aiming to spoil the party. Thank you. <laughs> Stuart Hogg, the youngest player with the British and Irish Lions to Australia in 2013. And that man, Richie Gray, one of four Scots in that Lions team. 30 seconds. Okay. Craig Schubert well, in be charge. On the big screen countdown, do you know? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the discussion. And the Wallabies will be mindful of discipline it's with Craig. They can see the two yellow cards. It almost saw people. them come unstuck against Wales. And assistants are Glenn Jackson and Paul Gozier with the TMO Ben Steen from New Zealand. The countdown. It's Scotland to run from the right. 2015, the final, quarter-final, and immediately Australia in possession. Here's Fadi. Argentina coming off a smashing victory over Ireland. And they will play the winner of this game. And there's Gitto. And he's 100th international today. Early penalty conceded by Dickinson. And then the arguing away. another 10 metres. Nah, that's exactly what you don't want. First penalty, penalty one take out first the penalty going and against you then to be much back ten. But what a wonderful take from the kicker from Adam Ashley Cooper. And then Australia were happy to play. Matt Ghetto coming up the blind side. And here you can see Aston Dickinson too eager in from the side, a long way offside. Well, that was all about adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if he didn't have a, a scrum cap, I think we'd see the steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> And it's a, a nice kick that's found touch about 30 metres out. And, and Bernard Foley, his parents are yep. here, and what a smashing tournament he's had. 56 points after the pool matches. Early Australian lineup. All taken by Simmons. Kurandrani. And uh, nicely taken. Solid tackle there by Peter Horn. Here's McCalman. Kirtley Bill is looming. Moore. Good tackle by Denton. We're on the 22. Good call for there by Scotland. Peter Horn back inside. And that's Maitland. He fell nastily. He's he's okay. Yeah. This is a turn over here. I think it actually came off Gainer's foot as it's presented back here. Just unfortunately so, but look at the reaction there from Johnny Gray. And from there it actually fell to Peter Horn, who's a right-footed player on the left side, and he couldn't get a kick away, so he used Sean Maitland right, and well. Mark, we're gonna go stable. His knee yes. was stretched there, yes. but thankfully he's okay and we've got the first scrum. Well, if you've never packed down in a scrum, this is your opportunity to get up close and personal. Okay. I can see it. Crouch! Bind! Set! Stay bound. He's falling. Ghetto out the back. Ashley Cooper. Beautifully taken by Hogg. Ball and all. Now McCalman. Solid tackle there by Denton. The number eight did well. Foley again. Australia attacking with the inside ball to Kirtley Beal. And quick ball here for the Aussies. Moore. Mitchell. It's only 15 metres out. McCalman. Australia playing with urgency, they're getting quick rock ball. Foley again. Kenya to Beal. Lovely ball to Hooper. He was off his hip. Ten metres to go. Back to Guido, first receiver. 
and Simmons. Australia with a good line out here on the left. They're applying enormous pressure here on the Scots, who are standing their ground. Use it! Stephen Moore sets things up. The calming influence of the captain. And Scotland just have to try and slow this possession down, don't they? They have to do a big hit, slow the possession. Good line here for Foley. Yes! Australia have lost it. Foley, I think, could have kept going. Lost forward and then got it down. Yeah, here's Joubert, the referee. Lost forward then, got it down. It was, but I agree, Gordon. I think Foley could almost have reached the line. Wonderful build-up play from the Australians. And then two or three times in this move, he challenged the line. He challenged the line again. And he looked for Drew Mitchell on the inside. Well, wonderful tackle by tight head prop WP Nell and Foley. Well, it's an opportunity to go on a begging. There's the mark. Some interesting build-up play really wasn't it? It was a, a good set-piece move from the Australians. Free and Ghetto out the back to, to launch a wide attack as we get up close and personal with another scrum. But the pressure will come on Scotland's come here. They need a good hook and a good clearance. Crouch! A good hook and a good heave. <laughs> a good hook and a good hook. A Mind. hook's a Scottish word for a long kick. Set! I learn something every day. <laughs> Australia trying to shut. Scotland going down. Denton. Scotland dug in well there. As Australia applied the, the second shot. Back to Johnny Gray. It's been all the Wallabies in the early stages. Here's an overlap from Maitland. They left him in a bit of open space. Kirtley Beals underneath. Ten from halfway. Mitchell's here, and so is Ashley Cooper outside. And Mitchell decides to uh, use the daisy cutter approach. And not a happy result there for Tommy Seymour. Only about a 10 metre game. Yeah, not a great strike from Tommy Seymour. He covered the kick well, actually, it was well guided, if not particularly attractive from Drew Mitchell, but he found the corner. And look at that already, look at that. 24 tackles made by Scotland, but only one by Australia. Scotland have the highest average tackle count in the tournament so far, with 148 tackles per game. And, well, if you have to defend all the time, your line will break, but they've been brave so far making those tackles. Beautiful throw up the back there. Kurundrani gets over the line of touch. Didn't survive the clean out. Again, a good clean out from the Australian. Simmons. Douglas went without it. Australia trying to use quick hands. Use it! That's where Australia will be frustrated as, as Laidlock players. An advantage is over, it will be another Australian liner, but that's where Michael Checker will be frustrated. Two opportunities. The first, obviously, with Foley, wonderfully challenging line, and then not finishing the move, and then that one, that tip-on pass, just when, when an early portion of the game you want to respect possession. Fern Cotter, he'll be frustrated at the amount of defending he's had to do, he'll want to get his hands in the ball as soon as possible. But Australia have to hold on to the ball, can't force it, or it'll bring Scotland into the game. Yeah, Australia working through Hooper has wriggled out of a couple of tackles. Party again. McCalman. Was forward the hooker up in defence. Now Foley. Some numbers here for Australia. Kirtley Bill. Lost it backwards. Get out. McCalman. Scotland just holding on at the moment. Out the back for Foley and Kurandrani. He held on to Peter Kurandrani. Ashley Cooper. And if Ashley Cooper gets the first try. And it was the big Fijian who busted out wide. Yeah, Kurandrani. He rode the challenge of Tommy Seymour and Seymour came off his wing. And Kurandrani just bashed it away. And then he had the composure. 
as we have another look at the studio, getting a lot of joy in the outside channels. There's Seymour coming up, Kurudrani bashes it away, and the composure to execute the two on one where, well, Adam Ashley Cooper, he's a proven try scorer. He scores his 34th international try. There's the power, and then the composure. And Ashley Cooper, well, he dies over in the corner. Famous dive, we see it so often. <coughs> and Adam Ashley Cooper lost one of his great schoolboy friends. Gus Grinham last week. He was here in a hospital trolley in one of the hospitality suites on oxygen. Adam Ashley Cooper, after the game, climbed the grandstand to see his mate who died just a couple of days ago. So the Wallabies playing for the late Gus Grinham and his family, his wife, and two young children. This is also new territory for Bernard Foley. This is his first ever match against Scotland. It's just the five-pointer then for Australia after ten minutes. Yeah, and all the possession, all the territory really going to Australia and all the points so far. There's the distribution, the two key players working together and Foley and Gitto and then Kudrani with the power and the precision of the pass and the wonderful attacking supporting line of Adam Asha Cooper, the swan dive and that's a deserved 5-0 lead for Australia Adam Ashley Cooper just so good in the air as well as Fardy now, only 15 out from his goal line Matt Gitto on the left boot Very dominant start from the Australians. Yeah, we've seen so many kickoff receptions go wrong in this World Cup, but the first two receptions from Australia are wonderfully taken by Adam Asher Cooper and a good platform to clear the lines. First Scottish throw. I think it's probably, we'll see a drive, I think. Scott will need to have their hands on the ball and try and make Australia make some tackles. And it's Richie Grant. Good ball here. Blair Cowan to the 22 metre line. And now Denton. Cowan just hurt in that last collision. Back to Johnny Gray and Richie's brother. This is more like it, Scotland. This is their chance with the ball in hand. 10 metres out. Who's hold. Back to Russell. Solidly met there by Douglas. Slow ball for Scotland. Dickinson and Gray. Australia defended amazingly, astonishingly last week against Wales with only 13 men. But now they're being asked some questions by the Scots. Denton. And there's a big tackle from McCalman. Cowan lets it go for Laidlaw. Back to Johnny Gray, the 21-year-old. A meteoric rise for him. Ford wants it. Now it's Russell. He probes. Burundrani over the top. There's a good pass inside for Hogg, coming off Cowan. Five to go. <laughs> Scotland winning a penalty. Direct play, wasn't it? Good hard ball carries. And interestingly, the Stuart didn't challenge a break then. On your face. Like we thought they would. That time they did, that time they were penalised. Scott Fardy penalised for being off his feet. And that's exactly what Scotland wanted to get back into the game. Some real direct rugby. This is a penalty here. Blair Cowan wonderfully popping yeah. back inside to Stuart Hogg and you see there's a hand Fardy off his feet and then trying to play the ball back. A clear penalty. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's the emotion in the stand as well. And you never see much emotion from Vern Cotter, but he'll be happy with the last minute play from Scotland. Yeah, it's got a great long opportunity to draw three points back for Scotland. And it was a nice touch to see the two coaches, Vern Cotter and Michael Checker, chatting before the game. They both have huge respect and they know each other, of course the Czechers stint in Ireland and also in France. 100th penalty for Scotland coming up. 
and there it is. And the gap down to two points. Greg Laidlaw. Yeah, he's a leader, isn't he? Not only with the points, but the direction he gives the team. And Scotland will be happy with that foray into the showing half. Kept possession, challenged the defence, and came away the points. Scotland have been tardy starters in all of their games so far. They the Samoans last week could easily have had four or five tries in the first half. They finished with three, but Scotland has been able to close out games in the second half, but not so against South Africa. At St James's Park, and Mitchell comes through there on Denton. He's big with Jigay. All six feet ten of him. And Douglas says, I'll take you, mate. Back now to Russell. Join, join. Well weighted kick, Foley's underneath. Beautifully taken. Seymour. And Hooper took him. Great hands from Richie Gray. Dickinson. Johnny Gray. And Denton out wide. Wonderful aerial kick for Finn Russell to put the pressure on the shoe. Taken back by Seymour. Now Horn goes stop, for distance. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Kirtley Beale. Yeah. Untroubled there, the ball going over the goal line, so we'll resume at the 22. Yeah, we said beforehand that Scotland had to mix it up, they had to try and create chaos, and that's a wonderful exit. Usually you see the ball going long, but it was a high kick. And look at that, Foley and Seymour, eyes on the ball. Wonderfully fair challenge. And that man, Seymour, came out with the ball. Good repost from Scotland after the difficult start, isn't it, Gordon? Most certainly. Very focused Scottish team here. They absorbed a lot of pressure early on from Australia. Could easily have conceded. And another try as Denton now. The man who played water polo as a junior in South Africa for the national team. No sign of any water around here today. It's overcast, but nice firm surface. Here's Finn Russell. Straightening. He took two Australians to bring him down. Hooper goes in. Didn't survive the clean out. Scotland oh, sealed off well. Nice work by Mark Bennett. He's Denton again. Denton so involved in the early stages. It took Kurandrani to stop him. Brilliant passage here from the Scots as Nell gets to the 22. Laidlaw. Maitland. He knows all of these Wallaby players. He's played them in the Super 15 and Laidlaw. Quick ball for Scotland. Gray and Nell. The crowd now getting behind the Scots. It's 10 metres out. Smashing low tackle there by Will Guinea. Use it! Australia 5-3. The Wallabies have conceded only two tries in the tournament so far. And here we go! That's the third one! They were caught nothing! And Peter Horn is Scotland's hero. Well, sometimes the easiest way is right over the top of the ball. The shortest route between A and B. And Peter Horn, he realised there was no defence in behind the ruck. He picked it, he's usually in the midfield. He finds himself in a ruck and picks right over the top of the ball. Dodge down for his second international try under the sticks. Look at this, the pressure comes on, Ford carries through the first tackle and number 12, Peter Horn, there's no defender. I'll take the space and look at that, first to react and a try. Well, it was an open gate, wasn't it? The whole flock of sheep could have gone through there. <laughs> you see Simmons just at guard on the left-hand side, he has a look to his right where usually there'd be a player in behind there defending that challenge but it was free it was open Peter Horn has a calm head in a cauldron of an atmosphere and Greg Lidl adds the extras well the Scots have averaged 146 tackles a match but they did their tackling early on and then they've come back hard at the Australians and they have a nice lead now they've hit double figures it's 10-5 So that has certainly put the Wallabies back on their heels. Here comes Drew Mitchell. 
and Denton again. Has there been a better player on the field than David Denton? Well, it gives you ball carrying ability. He's brave, he's tough. And he'll always offer himself to carry. Well, the old story, you've got to catch it first, haven't you? And it's all about pressure. This is a knockout match. And Foley, who hasn't put a foot wrong in the whole tournament. Michael Checker's reaction says it all. Yeah, these things happen, don't they? Just takes his eye off the ball. It's easily done. But the quality of that player, Bernard Foley, he won't let it get to him. He'll be frustrated, obviously, just so soon after conceding points. But there's more. Well, I'm sure he won't let it get to him. You see Handlon Harris 4 to 1 already for the Australians. Some of those forced, some of those unforced. But for me, as I mentioned it maybe 10 minutes ago now, Australia didn't respect possession early on like they should have done, they forced the pass. Crouch! And Scotland have another opportunity here. Boynes! The attack from Scotland. Set! Australia come out. The Scots. But it's Scotland who forced the error. Collapsing under pressure. And it was another low eight-man shot from the Scottish pack. Number one collapsing under pressure. Yeah, Scott Seal, you hear Craig Hubert saying Scott Seal collapsing under pressure. The Australian loose head. And Greg Laidlaw decides to have another shot goal. This is us on the near side here. Scott Seal, number one. There's not a lot in it. His shoulders hit the ground first. He turns in as well. So Blair Cowan's happy with that decision. Yeah, gives WP Nell a big slap in the back. And pressure now. Comes on to Greg Laidlaw, but this is an incredible fight back from the Scots after being under the pressure for the first 10 minutes of the match. Well, we watched Greg Laidlaw practicing his kicks from this region. Um, it's comfortably within his range, and his accuracy was uncanny. He duly does the job. And Scotland are out to an eight-point advantage. A stern look from the Princess Royal, but I think there's a lot of excitement controlled inside. Yeah, she'll be smiling inside. A fantastic supporter of Scottish rugby, the patron for so many years. I don't know, it's maybe just because she's at Twickenham, she's not sure she can jump up and down, but what a start by Scotland. Daughter Zara is also here. What a great moment at the Olympics when Princess Anne presented an Olympic medal to her daughter. Equestrian taken by Moore. Now it's a, a character test for the Australians. He's Polly. Back to Guinea. Simmons. Curtly Bill trying to spark something here. Getting over the advantage line. Tackler, play on, Tackler. And there's a pilfer from Scotland. Well, you've got two open side flankers on the field for Scotland. They've used Australia's tactic with Hooper and Pocock, but there's no Pocock here today. Well, I think it was Peter Horn, the try scorer, who made the tackle, got to his feet and won the turnover. That one's gone straight up for Guinea. Off the Scottish hand. He's Mitchell. Opportunity here for Australia. Everyone enjoy Bill's that. Space out wide for Kirtley Beal. Lovely pass. Foley. Play on. Play on. Here comes Giddo. And Russell there first. 22. Yeah, it just shows you how crucial the defence has to be from Scotland's point of view. So many good attacking players in this Australian side. Foley challenging line. This time it's Beal showing and going. Wonderful offload to Foley who chips. And good referee from Craig Hughesbert. Play on, he said. Australia just slightly out of position there as Kirtley Beale wants to get a good riposte in here. And it's a, a very good one taking play over the halfway line, but it's Scotland by 13 to 5 after 23. Yeah, it's a good kick by Kirtley Beale. He was, he was the first to take notice of Scotland's quick dropout and then the, the kick downfield. Interesting selection, obviously, that the injury to Israel Falau for Kirtley Beale, but such a talented player. Yeah. Pops up at first receiver, second receiver. To unlock the defence, and here's Ross Ford. Oh, yes, the man we're talking about, Cantley Beale, such an influence in the game with the ball in hand. That time breaking the line and having a wonderful offload. Richie Gay, superbly. 
Finn Russell, another tester for Beal. Here comes Seymour. Beal was good. Back for Guinea. Kurandrani. The Aussies queuing up here is Hardy. Now to Gitto. Scott Sia. For the head of steam, but they're only back to where they started from. Gitto again. Acceleration, looking for the inside support player, no one there. Kepu. Again, Scotland having to make so many tackles. Seymour read it well. Put it back inside the 22. It's got to stay in the field of play. Good reaction there from Finn Russell. Back to his opposite number, Foley. And Mitchell. Sean Maitland, again in good position on the right wing. And back here to Russell. Sized it up, went straight down the centre of the field. Soccer skills from Foley. Here's Beal. Kurandrani. Oh! Here we go! No! I'll tell you what. Bennett could not believe his luck there. It was an early Christmas present. <laughs> They caught everyone by surprise, including Mark Bennett. This was the offload out the back from Kurt Labiel at Kudendrani. He thought about giving an offload, and then thought he shouldn't have because he hit Finn Russell, and oh, that was a wonderful pass. The, the space was ahead of him. He's a tremendously yeah. quick player, and he puts his hand up, apologises to teammates. Oh, and Matt Taylor, the defence coach, can't believe it. Neither can Vern Cotter. Matt Taylor, defence coach for the yeah, Queensland Reps. There's a, a real Australian flavour. You've also got uh, Nathan Hines, the assistant coach, the man from Wagga, okay. as you say here, Wagga Wagga. But, I believe uh, it's Wagga Wagga. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Very famous sporting city in, in the southwest of New South Wales. Australia just with the edge in possession, but most of that came in the early 10 minutes. Since then, the Scots have been the dominant team. Yeah, it's what Scotland needed, wasn't it? You know, you said it already, they've been trailing in all the games so far at half-time in the Rugby World Cup, so they needed to get off to a good start, and they didn't. Australia came out of the traps first, got early points, but the, the reply from Scotland has been has been stern and has been profitable, 13 points so far. Crouch! Points! Another really interesting set-up here Six. of the Australian backline. We've got Bernard Foley on the right wing, Adam Asher Cooper at first receiver. Australian scrum holds well. Ashley Cooper then is the first receiver. He got to halfway. Good clean out. He's get out. And Beal. Well read there by Sean Maitland. Hands in the ruck. Hands in the ruck. Hand in the cookie jar. Too late. Well, it's tempting, isn't it? Actually, good tackle by Sean Maitland. You read it really well, and Kurt Beal works hard on the ground to present it. And yeah, they were clear as a bell. Clear as a bell on the far side. I think it maybe came <laughs> in from Pascal Gazer. Was it Glenn Jackson? Sort of on the far side to help out his mate Craig Joubert. Quite rightly, penalty. And a chance for Australia to launch in the lineup. Well, Australia needs to launch from the line-out because they are behind on the Good. scoreboard. It's a, an eight-point margin for Scotland. And Australia in unfamiliar territory so far in this World Cup. Fifteen-metre pass there to Foley. He's get out. And Ashley Cooper. Australia using full width there without going through the hands. Now McCalman. Some big gaps appearing in the Scottish defence. Foley again and more. Guinea wants to cut this open side, and McCalman's there. Now Beal. Here's trouble for Scotland. Kirtley Beal holds on for dear life. Kane Douglas. 
who has a Scottish grandfather. Drew Mitchell. Australia looking to come out with points here. Yeah, they're challenging close to the break, and I think they're better opportunities to go wide. They've had a bit of success out in the wide channels, but they're going direct at the moment. They've got a good line on this right-hand side. Back now from McCalman, but Scotland's defence is steadfast. Kiddo tried to step through the tackle. Nicely taken, though, by Bennett. Party has a crack. Vonage. Oh, oh, oh. It's been slowed down. Guinea goes himself. So does Hooper. The Indian rubber ball man. Scotland. That's CO. Now there's a chance for Australia. Big numbers. Beal. Drew Mitchell. 13th Rugby World Cup try for Drew Mitchell, only two behind the great Jonah Lomu and Brian Habana. Well, wow, fantastic player, a well worked try by Australia. They kept knocking at the door, Scotland's defence held firm, but after so many tackles, so much pressure, the space was on the outside, and that man on the outside, left hand wing, got to try. This came after 12 or 13 phases, two wonderful long passes from Foley, then Buell, and you can see an easy run in for Drew Mitchell. Kirtley Beale played his early football in Mount Druitt, and, and that was in, in rugby league before winning a scholarship to St Joseph's College. And they'll be up in the boarding houses at Hunters Hill. Australia's 200th World Cup try scored by Drew Mitchell. Yeah, had to work hard for it. They had to work really, really hard for it. Scotland's defence was was standing firm. They were penalised, so they were playing a penalty advantage. The students took advantage of that and managed to get from one side of the field to the other and outflank a defence. Drew Mitchell finishing off in Foley. Well, an opportunity from wide out. Missed his first one from the, the right touch line. He's going to try his luck from the left touch line. Michael Checker says of this man, he's cool, he can think fast, and he has a very good temperament. But Australia needs his goal-kicking boot at the moment. Two unconverted tries for Australia means they still trail by three. Yeah, we'll have a look at the try again. That's a first wide pass from Foley. And then Beal stepped up. We said earlier on that he's happy in that first and second receiver. He gives another distribution, another element of distribution in there. That fan's happy. As is Drew Mitchell as he crossed for his first try of the afternoon in 30 minutes. Nine minutes before the break. Ashley Cooper lost ahead that time. Two knock-ons. Knock-on both ways. First by Australia. Scotland's opportunity to consolidate. Yeah, it's interesting that there's a pod which is called lifters lifting Adam Ashley Cooper. Now, second rows are comfortable up there. Wingers, not so much. He actually got his hands set wonderfully well in the first kick-off of the game. He did that as well and held the ball, but enough pressure came on from the Scotland, fan, uh, Scotland players. Very subtle, but very clever. Sean Maitland there actually knocking the hand, the catching hand of Adam Ashley Cooper, just to help dislodge the ball. Crouch! Bind! Set! Collapsing. Number one, collapsing. Yeah, that has come from the assistant referee. I got the call, number one, collapsing. Gee, that's a tough call there, I think, against what looked to be a Not now, dominant Steve. Australian Not now. scrum. Yeah, it's that man. See you again. It's a second penalty for the same offence against Scott Seal. Collapsing the scrum. It'd be good to have a look at that one from the far side. And here we go. We're looking at the number one there. As we're collapsing. This is the view that Glenn Jackson has, and you can see. He certainly gets underneath W. Pinnell and hits the ground first. Whether it was collapsing or whether it was losing his foot, and I'm not sure. Oh, but thank you. 
A call came from the touchline. It's a penalty to score. That's what counts. Greg Laidlaw. Fifteen out of sixteen in the Six Nations. He doesn't miss, does he? The lead back out to six. Yeah, he's enjoying himself as well. A little smile, not an easy kick, wide out on the right hand side. He punishes the infringement at the scrum when he stretches Scotland's lead to six points again. Uh, he says the general is a captain, he's the leader, and he scores most of the points as well. A hugely important player for Scotland is Greg Laidlaw. Here comes Beal. And there's a hefty boot there from Stuart Hall. Mitchell back in the last line. Hobb goes quickly. Back to Russell. He's under pressure here. Hogg. There are a lot of gold jerseys and not too many Scottish forwards. Can Scotland hold on? Somehow they do. Onside. Yeah, use it. When it's a touch. Forward to Gray. Laidlaw gaining only a matter of seven or eight metres. Any if you can take it. Australia's ball. Back to Hooper. The Scots come away. They dived on the ball as it kicked out. He's hog. Tackle out, play on. Hardy. The number seven, the Kiwi. Back to Bennett. We're over halfway, 40 metres out, and they're playing on very quickly here, Scotland. They're getting nice quick ball. Yeah, dangerous with the ball in hand. Another little float from Gray. This looks promising. The pass was loose. Denton's out there. Great tackle by Beale. But Scotland in a very dangerous frame of mind at the moment. As Greg Laidlaw promised before the game. And Kepu hooks. He's down. There's Bennett. Barty goes in. Flicks it off for Russell and Gray. Johnny Gray. They're just keeping the ball alive. Seven the side style at the moment, Scotland. <laughs> making Australia do the tackles. Yeah, it's like a circus, isn't it? We got to keep a cool head under pressure and Scotland retaining possession well. Scott CO there. The loose head prop wins a vital. Number one was in a good position, should have won the ball. Yeah, he was in so quickly, Pulling wasn't on. he? Scott CO, well done, that man. As W3 now took it forward, Scott CO got over the ball. This was the end of that wonderful move. Good timing, good wide base. And his hands in the ball wins a penalty. And Stu needed that because Scotland were putting him under pressure, playing at a tempo and getting quick ball. Do it quickly, yeah. All of uh, Scotland's penalties, importantly, have been conceded in the opposition half, so not giving Australia any penalty goal attempts. Okay. Australia, on the other hand, have conceded three penalties in their own territory, and Laidlaw has punished all three. then to Hooper to try and drive this. Use it once. Australia working up towards the 22. They might be looking for some help from the back shortly. Hooper's still there. Benton doing his best to force it down. 
Is that a collapse? Swimming up the side. Swimming is the ruling. <laughs> Swimming up the side. <laughs> and it was Dave Denton. You mentioned his water polo background. A number of players it previously. Feels as, as well. if it's hard done by Dave Denton. We'll have another look at it. He certainly came up the side. Whether it was part of the initial mall, I'm not sure. As Australia, we're going to make a big decision here. Yeah. It looks like Ghetto's decided to go to the corner. Scotland are going to have to defend before half time. Gitai gets it five metres out. 90 seconds before the break. Anxious moments now for the Australian supporters at home and here at the ground. Yeah, the championship minutes, as they're all known, the five minutes before or five minutes after half time. Crucial period in which to score points and ultimately which to defend your line as well. Simmons calls. Scott Barty, the man. Hooper has it at the back here. Scotland go down. The backs join in. Wallaby's looking for their third try. Draw. Yes. Michael Hooper comes up with the ball. And that is a telling score by the Wallabies, a badly needed one. Michael Hooper in his 49th test match gets his eighth try. Okay. Yeah, he's got a big smile on his face. He was in control of the ball the whole time. Good decision to go to the corner. They see number seven, Michael Hooper, is bound the whole time. Adam Asher Cooper comes in to help. He's in control of the ball the whole time as Scotland tried to disrupt it, to bring it down. It was always under Cooper's control. And we thought there was a slight doubt in the ground in, but there was none at all. Well done, Craig Joubert. Right on the mark. He awards a try. Genia is happy. Kuradran is happy. Is Michael Checker happy? Ah, you betcha. Or relieved, perhaps. Huge relief there for the Australian camp. And an opportunity now for Foley, who hasn't kicked one yet. But if successful here, he will put Australia in the lead as the players go in at half time. Foley was 17 from 19 before this game. He needs to kick this to make it one from three. It's just not happening for Bernard Foley, and the Wallabies find themselves trailing by a point at the break here at Twickenham. A very exciting first half. Scotland putting the acid on the men in goal. It's 16-15 to the Bonnie Scott. Okay. Who will it be then? 40 minutes remains to determine Argentina's opponent in the second semi-final here next Sunday. Australia behind on the scoreboard despite scoring three tries to one. And Bernard Foley, whose kicking boot deserted him in the first half, gets proceedings underway. Beal tapped it back. And Sio comes down with the ball. Clever ploy there by the Australians. Hardy just lost that ball. Didn't seem to yep. see it coming. Advantage over. can take advantage here. Horn, Collard, 30 metres out. And that's Scott Seo again. He's prominent in the early stages of the second half. No. We need a halfback. Advantage over. Hardy catches that one. Space to the left here for Australia. Bernard Foley. Oh, one there by Maitland. <laughs> and he'll be wondering if he's... Uh, Cousin, Quade Cooper, will be uh, out on the field shortly. Cooper used to chase him around the, the primary school playground in Tokoroa. Over. Yeah. yeah. A couple of quality players. There was an opportunity here on the outside for a sure. Yeah. Sean Mitton just gets his hand in. Finn Russell, who made the tackle and Foley, did really well because he was initially in the backfield and he came up, shut down that opportunity. Just a knock on. 
to be a scrum for us too. But interestingly, there was time off. Third knock on. Ben, what are we looking at? Within the first minute of the, yeah, of the second half. Knock on. Right. So, so the team is going to be checking this one. Ben Skeen. And a wide angle of it, please. Thank you. So it's a, a Kiwi TMO a judging a Kiwi player. Those are the two best angles. How's Craig? he going to go? No real attempt to catch the ball. Okay, was there? Ben, I'll tell you what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing a deliberate knock on. I'm seeing cover coming across. I'm not thinking penalty try. But I'm thinking deliberate knock on. Are we talking yellow card? Yes, I agree with you, Craig. Yeah, thanks. 14, confirm? Yes, that is correct. Blue yeah, 14. Thanks. 14. We saw Alex Cuthbert for Wales in a similar situation We've against Australia. That situation, no attempt to catch the ball, deliberate knock on. Oh, sir, sir. Yeah. Well, we saw a penalty coming, but not really a yellow card there. No. I mean, it's so hard to not to put your hand out. It wasn't a genuine attempt to make, reach the ball, but no. the ball wasn't slapped down in any way, shape, or form. A penalty, from my point of view, would have would have been suffice. And they're going to go for the corner again. That's a big, big call by Joubert. But this is where it tests your character from Scotland's point of view. They have to dig in. Only a week ago, Australia. Well, they were on the other side. It went down to 13 men, and they hang on. Bern Cotter won't be. Overly happy with that decision. I think it stunned the crowd as well. The small and silent. Australia has to get its set piece right here. Douglas is at the back. It's going to be Barty again. Use it once. Hooper now with the counter drive. Australia will want to keep it up here. Scotland in trouble. Get here. Mitchell, he gets a brace. Clever call there by Will Gideon. He saw the space on the left, and Drew Mitchell gets his second try. Well, there were so many quality pieces of skill and execution in that move to the to the purest. A wonderful score from Asua. The driving mall was set up, defending initially well by Scotland, but then as Asua crabbed right, there was a wonderful offload from Hooper to Genia, and Genia set. Mitchell away in the corner, that there was just dropped out the back door. The communication between seven and nine was absolutely phenomenal. Mitchell kept it with and managed to score. There was some sublime touches of skill in that score for Australia. He scored a hat-trick against the Russians in Rugby World Cup in 2011. He's two-thirds of the way there, and he got a couple against Uruguay as well. And it's another touchline conversion for Foley. There you go, kick success, not from three, but all from very similar, two on the right. This is his second on the left in the five metre. As a kicker, you, you hope to learn from your, your missed attempts, put right what went wrong. And we'll see how Foley comes out here. Perseverance pays off for Bernard Foley. It's a new half and a new chapter for the Wallabies as they're suddenly out to a six-point lead. That's the wing that Sean Maitland would have been defending as well. Just seen yell for a deliberate knock-on. Clever play from Australia. Drove in field to open up that space. The link between seven, Hooper and Kenny at nine. And in the finish by Mitchell, quality execution. Slightly harsh in Scotland to have Sean Maitland and Sinman, but wonderful clinical execution by Australia. Scotland now to see if they can bounce back and Ashley Cooper kept his eye on that one. More Kuran Drani actually drove up there. Lost forward. The ball dropped down. Lost forward on the ground. So some sloppiness there from the Australians. And then Sean Maitland in the Sinbin. Only the second or third minute in the Sinbin. Actually, it's fourth minute in the Sinbin. Very difficult when the ball's passed in front of you like that. You reach out, as I say, his hand didn't accelerate to the ground, didn't slap to the ground, but he did knock it on. And the rest is his 
Important scrum, 35 metres out from the Wallaby goal line. Crouch. Bind. Set. Nell and Sio having a right wall battle. And Scotland gets the penalty against Australia for taking it down. Same penalty again. Scott Seal, third penalty from the scum. Before the Scott, uh, Australia had actually yeah. gained more penalties than anyone else from the scum in 16, but well, Scott Seal has given away three up against WP now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And when you're down to 14 men, it's a good opportunity to slow the clock. Have Greg Laidlaw take another pot at goal. Michael Checker's not too sure about the decision. But Scott Seal, well, it's three in a row. It could be a. It could be under pressure, it could be a relationship between him and Joubert, the referee sometimes. It might be better just for him to be taken off and replaced if, if the, the messages between referee and, and loose head aren't getting through. If he's successful here, he'll join Sanchez as the joint top scorer in the tournament. Looking for his fourth penalty goal. Never in doubt. Scotland closes the gap to just three in the 47th minute. He yeah, does again, doesn't it, Greg Laidlaw? As you said, there was no much doubt. But interestingly, there's a change on the loose head side for Scotland. But that's Gordon Reid coming on to replace Alistair Dickinson. On the, the Australians will follow after all the penalties for Seal. Well, the Australian scrum has not been performing at its usual standard tonight, and that's full credit to the Scottish eight. And uh, some damage being done by WP Nell, the tight head, the South African. Oh, was that a knock on? Scotland have put themselves into all sorts of bother here. Well, that's another one where the coaches will be kicking themselves or they'll be frustrated. The catch is fine to start with. Pressure comes on from Mitchell and as Finn Russell tries to hit Stuart Hogg, Stuart Hogg just fumbles a good chase by Hooper and Mitchell. And they get the reward from Forson. Firstly, the knock-on, and then secondly, the tackle and a touch. Australia have scored from two tries from driving malls so far in this match. I don't think they'll be too surprised at what's coming here. It's Rob Simmons. Australia managed to stay up. A couple of those Scottish forwards went down. They're all down now. Australia's still up and going. And Hooper has it. He's getting out. Mitchell looking for a hat trick. Just short. Quick ball needed. Numbers for Australia. Two on one. Kirtley Beale and Ashley Cooper gets a double. Well, Craig Joubert yeah. wants to check. He's going to check Time the grounding, I think. You're in the frame. We're looking at the last track where there was a knock-on at the back of the rack prior to the try being scored. Checking footage for a potential knock-on. Yeah. And uh, then try, no try scenario. That's it, yep. Well, that's a knock-on at the back of the rack. We're looking for this. Drew Mitchell did wonderfully well, tackled phenomenally by Peter Horn. He places the ball. That looks fine to me. We're now looking at this bit here. Did that ball go forward or back? It's certainly not under control. We'll need a side-on angle, I think, to determine where it went. Again, the two wide passes led to the opportunity. Yeah, that is another decision. Yeah. Just off Kenya's left hand. So, Ben, from what I'm seeing, uh, gold nine lost forward going back to the spin. That is correct. Yeah. The Heat's still back on the Wallabies. Well, it's a layoff well for Scotland. It's maybe just exactly what they need after Sean Maitland being shown the yellow card. Good intervention from the TMO. Yeah. Wonderful finish by Adam Asha Cooper after two wide passes, but the knock on and committed. Oh, it's so tense, so tense. The two poker players, Vern Cotter yeah. and Michael Checker. There's the mark. Not giving too much away. It's a big scrum as well, isn't it? I mean, we'll see the last 
two of these scrums have resulted in a penalty for Scotland. There's a great shot from above. Everybody should be pushing straight, and we shouldn't have any problems there, unfortunately. That doesn't always happen. Bind. Set. Stay down, stay down. Pull it out. Stay here, close, close. Thank it goes for Hogg. And he takes it outside the 22. Another so solid scrum. man down uh, uh, as well. Is it Scott Seal? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was both. Oh, and his shoulder, I think, as he was in a whole heap of pain yeah. there. He a mark. He's good. Yeah. Uh, somebody needs to get to him to help him out, or he needs to take a knee, I think. Well, very sad. He's he's dead. David, who played a quarter final against Scotland in 1991. This is him in the scrum against WPNL. It goes down, and then the pressure comes on. He turns in. His arms obviously caught up, so it's a shoulder or a side injury. Again, under pressure there from WPNL. And I think we'll. And that's why he's dead. Yes. Named him Scott. Yes, you can. Uh, send because him on. Scotland actually You're going to be won that quarter final so back in 1991. Level against Samar. Yep, send him on. And that's, uh, he's been one of the form Time on. loose head props, but he's come up against a, uh, a real Trojan today in WP Nell, the man from Edinburgh who qualified for Scotland only in June this year. Three-year residential. Yeah, there. Yeah, we wish him all the best. Scott Seal. Tough man in the front row. He's had an outstanding tournament. And Richie Gray has pinched it. Beautiful steal there by the big man, using his 6 feet 10 to great advantage. Use it. First stolen line out of the match, and what a time to do it. Scotland still with a man in the bin. Russell testing Beale. Seymour comes through. Back to Guinea and Mitchell. They can open out here. Cooper or Foley's there. Guinea looks around. Again, some good numbers here for Australia. Beal almost through. McCalman. It's Kane Douglas. 30 metres out from the goal line. Australia up by three. Foley. Richie Gray read it beautifully. James Slipper. Scotland's defence holding well. Outside. Sean Maitland about to return. Outside. Yep, thank you. Yeah, Sean Maitland returning after spending his 10 minutes in the Sinman, but he's returning to see you, Surya, have an attempt at goal. I think it was number eight, David Denton, or maybe Mark Bennett on the wrong side. It was Mark Bennett just as he gets up. Well, there's not much you can do. You can get up a little bit quicker, get out of the way. But I think Will Guinea is pretty, pretty accurate with the pass there, I think, winning the penalty. Well, he didn't give the referee any choice, did he? Yeah. Loitering with intent. That last phase of attack, Australia got some quick ball for the first time when we saw Foley coming around the loop. Sorry, uh, number? Mitchell carrying. Two. Kurt Rebill working so hard in contact after the initial tackle, wriggling, winning a few more yards, and it all results in quicker possession. And ball that he can run onto and challenge the defence with. Well, if Foley can nail this, it'll be a, a good result for that sin binning period. It'd give Australia. 10 points to three, while Maitland was uh, in disgrace. Huge kick for Foley and the Wallabies. Sailing through the uprights. 
And Australia has it out to a six-point advantage once more. And that's Fraser Brown coming on, the man who's originally picked the start ahead of Russ Ford after Ford's ban was overturned. Fraser Brown dropped to the bench. It Greg Holmes on also on for the Wallabies. I mentioned to Foley there as well for stepping up and kicking that 40 metre goal after a difficult day with the boot. Good execution. Finn Russell. And Tavita Kurandrani underneath on the 22. Scott Fardy with a nice little step there. Well, that's just about his best run at the World Cup. Made 12 metres. And Foley with the charge of the light brigade from the Australians. Russell underneath, here's Hogs. Foley's back here. Hogg coming through. And a big purchase there from Foley taking it just over the halfway line. Yeah, good exit by Australia there initially. Fardy putting a bit of footwork on the defenders and getting through, getting quick ball. And then Foley kicked long. The, the line chase from Australia was, was a particularly good force and Hogg to kick. You can see the line outs. Only one lost in the game. That was one steal to Scotland. That's the last line at Richard Gray getting up. And the first throw for Fraser Brown. Let's see if he can continue the 100% success. Oh. It wasn't too straight, but no one jumping for Australia. His mate Wallabies all over it. Mitchell. One is over. And it came off Cowan. Okay. So it's going to be an Australian throw into the line outs. Gone quickly. to come back interestingly that that last breakdown there McCallman and Hooper were in so sharp much quicker than they've been over the ball to win the turnover than they were in the first half the tackle came Kurandrani and then look at that Hooper and McCallman in unison the ball actually came off Mark Bennett's foot but they're challenging that breakdown far heavier than they did in the first half and hasn't Drew Mitchell been impressive on the left wing for Australia his experience really shining through He's always impressive for me, Gordon. Quality player. His folly. Kito. I'm talking of that man, Mitchell. Not much on for him here. Takes it into Maple. McCalman. Johnny Gray underneath. Fardy cleans out. Turnover is good. Fraser Brown with a turnover. Fantastic work by Fraser Brown, the hooker. Numbers out here for Scotland. Russell. Now it's Denton, the big fellow. Hooper comes away. They counter here, Australia. That was a terrible kick. An intentional offside. Accidental offside. <laughs> well, so what happened was he got kicked into a blue player and then a blue player in France picked it up. An intentional scrum. Well, Craig a blue player, blue player in front. Craig Joubert take a bow for deciphering that so quickly. A wonderful attack down the left-hand side. Dave Denton threw it in field to Hogg. Hogg could have held on to this. They tried to force that extra pass and Hooper picked up. And then Adam Ashley Cooper, Cooper had a lash with the <laughs> side of the right boot. Came off WPNL. There we go. Oops, it. that was a banana, I think. We'll call it a banana. Came off WPNL. And then Finn Russell, who was in front of WPNL, picked it up. That all happens in a fraction of... Split second. Well done, Craig Joubert, to be on, on the money. Yeah, this is Greg Holmes for Australia, having some attention. We've seen both props leave the field for Australia. And Holmes feeling it in the uh, around okay. that hamstring area. He comes from Allora in the Volsca. Darling Downs. And the author of Mary Poppins, J.L. Travers came from that same town. The game's opening up a little bit, Gordon. Quick ball for both teams. I think that'll suit Scotland. Crouch! Bind! Set! WP now on this side, looking to do some more distraction. Stand up. Stand up. Australia going a little early there. He didn't get his head in, so... Let's go, boys. 
you want to come a little bit closer? Yeah. 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 Craig Joubert penalised with a free kick the Australians last week against Wales for chasing too early at the engagement. You have to be careful there. Crouch! Bind! Set! In here quickly then for Foley. And there's a try for Scotland. Well, it should have been. He couldn't go on with it, but now Seymour! Foley's kick has been charged down, and it's a gift for the Scots. Well, Scotland take the lead again. Tommy Seymour with his fifth try in a row. Five internationals in a row. His fourth in the World Cup 2015. It came from a charge down for Finn Russell on Foley. He reacted quickly. A wonderful tackle here by Will Genia. But there it is, the pop off the ground by Finn Russell. The pace from Tommy Seymour. The dive in the corner. And what a time to score for Scotland. The vision of Finn Russell as he just calmly pops the ball up and the finish from Tommy Seymour what a roar that made that here inside Twickenham Rounding all good then sorry say again and okay, Scotland thanks. now equaling their highest ever score against the Wallabies Scotland Downing the Wallabies at Murrayfield, 24-15 in 1981. And the Edinburgh was frozen over. The city was under a foot of snow. This to put his side in the lead. But no joy, so Australia clinging by a point. 25 plays 24, 20 minutes to go. Yeah. It's going to come down to the finishers. There's a quick heel from the scrum, wasn't it? Fall, it just took too long. The chip was too flat. Finn Russell reacted fast, a lovely piece of play off the ground under pressure and I got too excited I thought that put Scotland ahead the conversion would have but the conversion was missed there's one point in it well, it's the first kick that Scotland has missed and David Denton a brilliant game he's had solid tackle though by Simmons the Wallabies clinging and what is a cliffhanger here at Twickenham more the Scots looking for their first victory here in 32 years the Wallabies have never lost a, a World Cup game here. Laidlaw supports. Went backwards. That's Fraser. Brown, the hooker. Use it! 20 to go. Pollis are now warming up the Australian hooker. Kirtley Bill. They're up quickly. Kirtley sees again. Pop the Tavardi. And Giddo. A lot of Scottish jerseys out here. Cowan is there. Scottish defence has found his shape after that kick. And that big hit coming in as well from Gordon Reid. Great defence. Bill getting involved. Kurandani. Foley. Ashley Cooper. He raked it back. Here's Hooper. Scotland hold on. Kirtley Bill then to get out. Here is Douglas and Fardy. In ball. Chance for Maitland. But he kicks it into touch. The ball only had to go to hand there for an Australian try. Well, what attack from Australia. And what defence from Scotland. A wonderful, wonderful game. Second 40 minutes here as Australia ring the changes. This is where Australia break down the right-hand side. Kudadrani walks away. A wonderful quick pass. From Foley, and then watch this from Stuart Hogg. He sits down. Adam Asher Cooper. Still, the pressure came. Let's have another look at this tackle from Hogg. His left shoulder low and hard on Asher Cooper. And even after that, there was another opportunity for Australia on the other side of the field. And the pass just failed to go to hand from Fardy. In his 100th international, the Australian skipper departs to Tapu Pelota now. On for the last 20 minutes, so the entire Australian front row replaced. Well, it's going to be unbearable, I think, for both sets of fans here. What a match. 
everyone on the edge of their seats at Twickenham. Yeah, that last passage of play, that was great attack, great defence. We've got everything here at Twickenham. Paddy got it. The driving ball has served Australia so well. Hooper in control at the back. Use it once, going sideways. Scotland have defended well, his Guinea. Bounce important for Maitland. They can have a quick throw, but he decides against it. Yeah, another, another comfortable drive by Australia. The well defended by Scotland because it was crabbing across the field. Craig Joubert told Guinea to use it. And he popped the ball in behind for Drew Mitchell to chase. Holland Decker. And it just dribbles into touch. Scotland's throw. And Scotland make another sub. Sean Lamont coming on the field. And what a man to bring on as Tommy Seymour departs after his two brilliant tries. Come on. But Sean Lamont in his 101st international. Pito standing in the hooking position. Australia pinch it. Pelota now gets the crumbs. Back to Holmes. That's McCalvin, the workhorse. Burundrani right in front of the goalpost now for Australia. Hooper. Backwards. Fadi. On side, yeah. Pelota now looking for that canvas on the post. Kurundrani. Can they stop him? He got it. He did it to the Springboks. And he's done it here to Scotland. Kurundrani crosses for the fifth Australian try. He had to work hard for it. A wonderful finish. He stretched through the tackle. Of John Hardy, he uses all of his six foot five frame. It came from the stolen line out. Rob Simmons getting up in front of David Denton. Pelota now reacting first, and here's the stretch. Hardy laid low with a tackle. Six foot five frame. But couldn't Rani reaches the line. Well, they'll be cheering at the Leilin Memorial School in Suva. That's where he was a boarder. The school that produced Waisali Sarevi and also the Fijian captain. Akapusi Ungira. Well, Cheka looks slightly more relieved. It's couldn't run it. Three defenders to bring him down. <laughs> and he still had the reach. Just to make the line for the students' fifth try. This game's just going from back and forward. Great entertainment. Again, this is a crucial kick for Foley because it would put Australia out beyond the converted try margin. Struck it well. And Australia has it by eight to beat a Kurandrani. Gives the Wallabies a settler. Well, it was getting his little dribble into touch, wasn't it? Five metres from the line that gave Scotland the line at the Australia one. There's a dummy from Kurandrani. And the stretch full length just makes the line. He used his 16 stones and six feet four frame there to huge advantage. And Dean Mum, who was sent in last week by Craig Schubert, out for the closing stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a, sp a Springbok head or a Wallaby head. Whatever it is or was, they'll be enjoying the action. Scotland fall behind now. They've come from behind so often in this game. Fraser Brown has to hit his man here, launch another attack. Use it once! It's poetic that time. John Hardy has it at the back. Line speed from the Australian defence coming up. Pushing Peter roll away. Horn inside. Number 16, roll away. It's against Pelotta now. So nice work again there by Peter Horn. Yeah. And Finn Russell's going for touch. Pelotta now not rolling away. He was a tackler, but a good kick by Finn Russell. Pushes in the corner and Scotland making another change. And there's Josh Strauss. Yeah. 
Yeah. Coming on for Blair Cowan, we think. And also Tim Swinson on for, for Johnny Gray. So both players who were due to start after the, the ban was overturned are now on the field. There's one. And Fraser Brown. Tim Swinson's going to join him in the line out. 18 tackles by Johnny Gray. What a contribution by him. Fraser Brown. Denton was there. Dean Mum. And he's hands once. around Denton there. He's got to be very careful about handling an opposition player in the air. I think that's Hardy there. Australia with some gaps as Strauss towers towards the goal line. Back with Laidlaw. Scotland looking ominous here. Trying to hold him up. Yep. They're going through the centre through Strauss. Meters out from the goal line. They're all in a bunch here, Scotland. Denton. Laidlaw. Oh, it went backwards. His hog. He's still dangerous. Dean Mum looking for the steal. No advantage, roll away. Tackler, roll away. It was a long advantage, Gordon. Yeah. Scotland really close together. Too close together, really, to challenge the Australian defence and the Australian defence. Holding firm is a direct approach from Scotland. Only brings a penalty, and the Greg Laidlaw decides to, to go for goal. 12 minutes to go, that's the right decision, in my, my opinion. Was that the call from Bern Cotter? Well, it looked like it, but I think Greg Laidlaw no. knows his way around the rugby field. He knows what he's doing, and I think, I think the, the call would be confirmed by Vern Cotter, but Greg Laidlaw, pretty sure he'll chip this over, and for me, with 12 minutes to go, it's the right decision. Matt Bennett had to go at the line, he was held up here, somehow managed to get the ball back. I think Strauss ripped it from him and gained another two or three yards, but you said it Scotland were bunched together, so the Australian defence could afford to stay tight together. The space is between them smaller, and not a lot of space for Scotland to attack. So the margin then, back to five points. Five penalty goals to Greg Laidlaw. Also one conversion, a personal tally of 17 points. Just over 10 to go. Anyone's match. These two sides fighting for that last semi-final position in Rugby World Cup 2015. The victor to play Argentina next Sunday here. Australia have a head in front. But Scotland have shown their passion and their belief in this game. Reed taken to ground. Still inside the quarter. Finn Russell goes high. Ashley Cooper back to regather. Good recovery there from the Australians. Guinea. He lost a head. Now Hogg can counter. And he does it for territory. And it's an outstanding kick, but no! Just out on the full. No advantage for Swood. That's a backbreaker. I think we're going to come back for the knock-on. <laughs> sure Hogg was fortunate there. There was acres of space in behind from the turnover. And it sailed just out on the full. It must be almost a metre in it. Yeah, just about a metre in it, but the knock-on already from Milgenia. The referee hadn't called the advantage on. over, so we come back for the Scotland Lost scrum. Forward. Nick Phipps coming Cabrera. on for Milgenia. There's the mark. Richie Vernon replacing Peter Horn. As we see the rain There's falling the here as well, at Twickenham. Changes for Australia as well. Nine minutes remaining. Matt Cross! Defending here at first receiver. Bind! Volley goes to the right wing. Set! I think we'll see a kick here. There's a rain and it begins to fall. Stand up, please, stand up. The scrum. 
It's just fair and it's played. I think we may see Scotland clean the lines. Come this way, please. We're going to have a word from Joubert. Yes. We'll let Ryan, just to remind the Australians of Newcastle in 2012, when Greg Laidlaw yes, kicked the winning penalty for Scotland to scrape home by a point. Steady. First time we've seen Ryan at Twickenham. But the God speaking here for Scotland. <laughs> well, you get the psyche of the Scottish mentality because Cross. the crowd are up on their feet roaring because it's raining. and they believe that's an advantage for Scotland. Blind. But the way Scotland play, Set. I don't know if it's an advantage or not. You would rather be ahead when the rain comes down in the game. Well, if it becomes horizontal, we know that there definitely is divine intervention. You've got to work on your body shape. You've also got to work on your body shape. What a performance by WP Hill. The tight head top on this side here in the headgear. He plays with Edinburgh. Played under Naka Drosky with the Cheetahs, the, the great Springbok and Cheetahs coach. Crouch! Heavy rain. Binds! Six and a half Sets. to go. Well, some boring in there by the loose heads. Ball is out. For Scotland. Cleary there on the spider cam. Slippery ball. Deal underneath. Safe as houses. Yeah. Slip up. Oh! No! Bennett! Ooh. Stolen it, and is that the winning play for Scotland? Well, Mark Bennett routes the pass, I think it's Slipper, the first receiver. It's a long pass from Guinea. Slipper dug it and then fought it through it. Mark Bennett read it from out to in. Sprints clear, third try in Rugby World Cup, and scores beneath the posts. There he is, his Slipper. The double pump, the reach from Mark Bennett, and no one's going to stop him. Under the stakes, a conversion to come. Wow. Scotland have scored two tries in this game, and they've both been Christmas presents from the Wallabies. Conversion then. To put Scotland in the lead with just under six to go. The crowd confirm it. Torrential rain, shades of Newcastle in 2012. Will it be the same result? Well, Mark Bennett read it all the way. They recognise the loose head pop at first receiver. The delight on Sean Maitland and Mark Bennett's face. The game's not over. The Australians come through with Hooper and also Farney. And they've ruled knock on. Lost four goals. Yeah, it's again so much pressure coming at kickoff time. The surely got up, but I think it just drifted forward, not on the knock on, but just knocked forward to Fardy. Vern Cotter's still putting messages on. An important scrum, as is Michael Checker. Nobody knows where this one's going. Wallaby's facing a short exit. Let's have good hearts, please. Scottish fans delirious. Crouch! Bind! Set! There's a great Australian scrum. Scrum up. It's gone straight up, scrum though. Up. Again, blue. And nothing going Australia's way. Uh, as soon as the whistle went, every one of those 16 forwards just quickly glanced at Craig Joubert to see what the decision is. A big scrum there from Australia, wasn't it? Time off injury. We've got an injury time off for an injury time for a player city group. And reset, Gordon, read it is. Getting some treatment. Come on. Excruciating moments for the Wallabies here. And look at Stuart Hogg getting involved. There are seven yeah. Glasgow Warriors players on the bench. 
here today and remember the Glasgow Warriors won the Pro 12 in brilliant fashion under Gregor Townsend in the quarterfinal in 2003. The man Grouch. alongside me, Chris Patterson, was in the Scottish side against Blind. Australia in Brisbane. So was Gregor Townsend. Set. Australia pushing early. Three and a half to go. Slipper that time. A free kick against for an early engagement. Just going early. They got away with it earlier on, the Australians. Not a lot in that. Not a lot in that at all. But Scotland have taken it and they've cleared. Thirdly deal. Three minutes to go. It's a raking kick by Bill, looking for the far touch. Stuart Hogg is back there. A good chase there well, from that's... the Wallabies as well. Back to Gidda, the experienced man. Australia looking dangerous through Phipps. He does a water slide. But he went into touch. The conditions help in Scotland there. A wonderful kick by Kurt Reveal, putting pressure on Scotland, but Stuart Hogg cleared his lines and then the counter-attack came. Here's the kick from Stuart Hogg, he was complaining about being hit late. There's nothing in that for me, Drew Mitchell can't pull out with that, nothing in that at all. And then from there, Sorry. Australia counter-attack down the right-hand side, Phipps. Well, he was tackled into touch, slid into touch. That's another line-out for Scotland. They've only lost one. This is a crucial throw and a crucial line out for Fraser Brown. Two minutes remaining. Oh, no! In front. The referee has ruled in front. a penalty infringement. The man in front of a Scottish hand. And Australia now has a kick to hit the front. What a pressure attempt here for Bernard Foley. Well, the throw just slightly too high. Denton got a hand to it, and then here it's knocked forward from Harden and grabbed up by John Welsh. It's almost impossible. You, it's almost impossible. Instinct doesn't yeah. allow you to pull out when everything's happening. It'd be good to see that in real time, to see how little time John Welsh has. A harsh call, but it's a call that's been made. Here we are in real time. Ball comes forward from Strauss. It did John appear Welsh. to come off the shoulder there. Did it come off the shoulder of the, of the Scottish player? John Welsh couldn't get his hands away in time, but the pressure now falls and Foley. Big moment. Australia's fate in this World Cup is now on the right boot of this man. This for a semi final spot. The Iceman does it! Heartbreak for Scotland. There is still one last gasp, though, for the men in blue. Seconds remaining. Last 30 seconds. Scotland's point of view, they have to get this kick-off back, but well done, Bernard Foley, under pressure. He'd missed kicks earlier on. He nailed that one. Taken by Kurandrani. Australia now can't afford to concede a penalty. Use it! Referee watching closely. Ten seconds to go. Australia just have to run the clock down here. Yeah. They'll kick it into touch. And Australia's through to the semi-final. There was plenty of controversy in the game. But that was the great escape. Devastation for Bird Scotter and the Scottish team. Well, so often, so many times, Scotland comes so close. Another one there. You can't take it away from that man, Bernard Foley, regardless of the decision. He had to step up after missing three or four attempts earlier on and knock over the crucial penalty to win the match. Well done to Bernard Foley. Well done to Scotland, an incredible decision, an incredible game as the rain teams down at Twickenham, but ultimately Australia progress and they'll face Argentina. Scotland so close to their most famous victory of all. And it came down to a matter of centimetres, a refereeing decision. And 
Bernard Foley, who won the Super 15 for the Waratahs with a similar pressure kick, a more difficult one. Made no mistake after missing with his first three here today. Somehow Australia has prevailed against all the odds in those dying stages. Well, Australia scored five tries to Scotland's three in that man, Bernard Foley. His kicking boots were missing in the first half, but when it really counted, when you were in the last minute of the game, the last opportunity to win the match, he stepped up. Scotland brave. They'll be disappointed, they're sick of being called brave, they're sick of being called nearly men. But three tries of their own, a fantastic effort. They'll be bitterly disappointed with the result, bitterly disappointed with the penalty, but they'll hold their pride. Fantastic effort from that man at Scrum Time WPNL this afternoon. He caused all sorts of problems against the Australians, who are one of the best scrums in the tournament. Check is relieved. Well, that was just exasperating. Breathtaking final minutes that's now here from the losing captain. Greg, many commiserations, a heartbreaking way to lose. What was your view of the penalty right at the death that's cost you the game? Well, they got the TMO for everything else. Such a big decision. Why would you not go the TMO for that? Decisions went against you in that second half. What was your view also of the short make them the yellow card that cost you points? Oh, listen, I thought they were grumble too much about that. Tony stuck his hand out and the ball went down. It was disappointing. We don't really work the slap down, so, you know, you've probably got that one right. You must be bitterly disappointed, but also very proud. Your team refused to give up through the game. But Brave Scotland, it's a, a label you've had before. You wanted to shake it off today, I'm sure. Oh, listen, of course, really, this team's different, I think, this team around. And, you know, I think you can see that from our performance. And, you know, oh, it's just, I don't know what to say, really. I know, I know it's difficult, but uh, this is a young team and you'll feel that there's a big future for this bunch of players. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, we do. Uh, and we'll work on that in time to come. We'll just, uh, I don't know, as I said, I'm lost for the words. I understand. Thanks very much, Greg. Well done. Thank you. Well, just a sense of desolation for the Scottish team. They did everything but win that game. They just kept coming back. And somehow Australia was able to show the resilience to see it through. Australia to face Argentina in the second semi-final here next Sunday. Uh, I think as well as, as Australia go for a handle, Scotland are going to go to thank the crowd and they'll get a huge ovation. The big escape for the Wallabies. Stephen Moore, many congratulations, a place in the semi-finals, but that was as close as it could possibly be. The crowd are obviously unhappy with some of the decisions, but what's your view on it? Oh, look, I thought it was a good test match. Scotland played really well. You know, their, their fans and their people should be very proud of the way they played, just the way I am. I'm proud of my boys. We hung in there and played right to the last minute. It wasn't our best performance. There's a lot of work to do during the week, but we've got a week before we play Argentina. You scored five tries, but you couldn't finish them off. They just kept coming. Were you surprised by their resilience? Not really, no. We've played them before, and it's always been close. We knew World Cup quarterfinals, teams are going to lift, and everyone does that. So, um, you know, we knew they were going to play really well, and they did. You've got Argentina in the semi-final here next Sunday. They produced a thrilling display today. You feel you'll have to up your game again? Yeah, absolutely. Every week it's going to go up a level. We've got a lot to work on there, but we've got a week to, to get down and train hard. And, and uh, you know, we'll be back here next week, and hopefully everyone else in the crowd will be here again. And thanks to all the Aussie fans for coming out. It means a lot to us. 100th cap, well done, Stephen, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much. It was shades of Australia's escape in 1991 at Lansdowne Road against Ireland in the quarterfinal. They got a last-ditch try there. Here, they got a last-ditch penalty goal by Bernard Foley, and they're home by 35 to 34.